everybody, it's Kate from Charles Ted Interiors. I have over the weekend been giving my hallway a little bit of an overhaul and I've posted a few little snapshots on our Instagram stories um, of how it's coming along and um, little sneaky peeks of the colours and things that I've been using. Now, I live in a really old house. There isn't a straight wall in the place. Um, and this particular room isn't symmetrical at all. There's three doorways coming into it and then the front door and it's just a really tricky room to work with so I wanted to give it a bit of a zhuzh, um, bring a bit of life into it so that when you come in the front door there is a bit of a wow factor. Now I'm not an overly crafty person, I'm not very good at DIY, I have zero patience when it comes to doing things like this. Now I managed to do this in probably half a day um, so if I can do it, anybody can. I will run through um, the things that I bought to achieve this look um, and hopefully it will help you guys to do something similar. So before I started, I had an idea in mind of the sort of look that I wanted to achieve. Um, I trawled Pinterest for ideas um, and there's so many beautiful Instagram accounts at the moment that are um, doing panelling beautifully. Um, the more you look at Pinterest, the more you will see the different types, styles, um, kind of fascias and dado rails. And actually, what I found out on Pinterest is that it's actually called wainscoting in the US. I don't know if I've said that right. Um, but Pinterest opens up a whole world of variations in panelling. So the most important thing that I discovered you need for this project is one of these. This is key. Once you've got your measurements right, the rest becomes so easy. So measure once, twice, three times, um, and write your measurements down. I actually had to scribble all across my wall of um, the different points of what the measurements were. And from there, you can then work out the size um, and shape of your panels. So I put together a shopping list of things that you will need to create this look. I used this beading from b and Q. I I was really nervous of buying anything fancy because I genuinely thought I'd probably mess it up and waste my money. So I think the whole project probably cost me about £25 uh, in items that I've used here and a couple of bits I must admit I did have already, such as the, the seal to go around the wood. But I used this beading here, which is an FM125, I'll link it below. And this was going to make my rectangle panels. Now across the top, I have used this here, which is a dado rail. And my mum saw me buy this and actually said, Kate, that's really old fashioned. We used to have those in our house when you were growing up. Um, so I did educate her slightly on how trendy panelling is at the moment. Um, this is, a FM116 from B&Q again, and I'll do a swipe up for you as well. Now, you will know how much you need from your own measurements. I've just done two walls, uh, and I didn't need much at all. As I say, it cost me about 25 pounds. So you'll also need one of these, Spirit Levels. This one's really handy because it's got the horizontal but then it's also got the vertical as well. Now, I don't even know if that's like a thing with these. I've never really used one in my life, um, but I was quite impressed that it did both ways anyway. This is a mitre box, and this just made the job so, so easy. I can't tell you. And once I got the hang of using it, I cut the pieces in no time at all. So a mitre box, I'll do a little demonstration for you um, with my beading, but you basically lay your wood inside and then using this enormous saw, it slides down and cuts at a perfect 45 degree angle. So when your wood meets, it meets seamlessly and it just, it is honestly so easy. Next, you need some no nails to glue your panning to the wall. This stuff is just the best ever. No nails, perfect. And then lastly, a hammer and some pins, um, quite long pins, and I'll explain why shortly. So 
So the first thing I did when I started was to work out the height of where I wanted my dado rail to go. So once I had measured the height of this, I then worked out how I was going to set my rectangles out underneath. Now I don't know if there is a hard and fast rule about um, how high that they should be and how far apart they should be, um, but I just kind of went with what I thought I would like height wise. So the top of my dado row is 77 centimetres, um, which I felt was the right height for, for this job. So the next thing I did was measure the length of the wall here. And then from that measurement, I then looked at the wall and I thought, okay, so how far in do I want the squares to start? How much space should I have around the edge? Now, this gap here is six centimetres. So I deducted 12 centimetres from my measurement from here. And from then, knowing that I wanted three panels, I then divided that space into three. Now, what I would say, and I found it so helpful, was I actually drew all of this on the wall so I knew exactly where each of my panels was going to be stuck. Um, and that made it so much easier. I literally traced across the top and the bottom of the dado rail, and then there were scribbles everywhere. And then I drew on these panels as well. Um, and like I said, it just made it so, so much easier. And again, I've got a photograph I took when I was doing it that um, we'll show you as well. So my panels are 35 centimetres wide and they are 55 centimetres tall. And I've carried that size on right the way around the room as well. So as you can see from the panelling, there's an edge here and then more of a tapered edge here. Now, I don't, again, think there's any rule on which way round your square should sit, whether it should be like that or the other way, with that on the inside. But I decided that I would like this bit to be on the inside of my square. So when you do start cutting, just bear that in mind that that must always be your inside edge. So from my measurements, I knew that I needed 14 upright pieces of beading. Um, so seven of each side. So I measured 55 centimetres on the beading here, left a smidge over for wastage when I was cutting, um, and made sure that the angles that I was cutting were on the right side to the uh, edge here. So on your beading, this angle here is 45 degrees, so you need to cut this upright at 45 degrees angle that way, and then the opposite side, you cut 45 degrees the other way. And then your top panel will meet both of these edges at 45 degrees. But I promise you with the mitre box, it is really, really simple. So because I knew that my length needed to be 55 centimetres, I marked on here. And the 55, just there, needs to be in line with the 45 degree angle line here where your saw starts. So for this piece, I've now got the angle going this way, so the top needs to go the opposite way. So I've just marked a line on there, just so I know which way I'm cutting my 45 degree angle. So you've now got two pieces, the same length, and mirroring each other. So your uprights are now done. So the top piece, as I mentioned earlier, measures 36 centimetres, and I've cut that at 45 degrees angles each side to meet the upright pieces. And as you can see, they sit together perfectly. I'm now going to repeat that on this bottom section and then you have your panel. So 
as you can see, I've now got my four pieces and they're now ready to be glued to the wall. So using the lines that I mentioned earlier that I'd already drawn on the wall, then stick these pieces with a bit of the no nails just on the back here and they meet perfectly on the wall. So I did exactly the same with the dado rail here as well. Cut that to size and then using the no nails, stuck that on the wall too. One thing that is a really handy tip um, that actually my decorator said to me when he was watching me do this was to just put a pin in each piece of wood just at the end of each piece, but don't pin it right way in. Just literally put it so that it just comes into the wall and then when you come to um, let it dry and paint, you can then remove the pins and there's not really any hole that you need to fill or anything. It just helps it not to move while it's drying because you don't want to come back in a few hours and for all your panels to have slipped. I completely forgot to mention in the shopping list at the beginning was that we used decorator's cork, um, which you can buy again in B&Q, it's really cheap, and just filled in these little edges here so you've just got no obvious join of the wood. Um, and if you do go slightly wrong with your measurements, the cork will just cover any sort of little errors that you might have made. Um, and it just really makes the job look super neat. And we did it all the way along here as well, um, just to bring it all in together. We then went ahead and painted the panelling um, once it was all dry. Um, I've actually used a Ferro and Ball Estate Eggshell in all white, number 2005. I'll pop a link below for you to this as well. I wanted my beading and daily rails, my panelling, I wanted it to look like it was all wood. So the wall has actually been painted in the wood finish paint as well. So it all flows nicely. And the colour above is Ferro and Ball Blackened. Um, and that's just an emulsion, um, so not shiny. Um, and then for those of you asking, I had a bit of a panic and was going to just paint this to match the rest of the wall, but I decided to be a little bit edgy. And this is um, the Domino by Dulux, purely because the Faro and Ball shut was shut on Sunday when I wanted to buy the paint, and this is as close as a match as I could get.